Hey everybody, welcome back to Reading with Mrs. H. I am Mrs. H. We are reading Wonder by R.J. Palacio. And after I hit record, I realized I forgot what part number we're on. So I'm going to look at that um, while I say hello. I know we're in August. All right, part six, which is August. <clears throat> and this chapter is called Daisy's Toys. Justin came over about a half an hour later. He gave me a big hug and said, Sorry, Augie. We all sat down in the living room, not saying anything. For some reason, Via and I had taken all of Daisy's toys from around the house and put them in a little pile on the coffee table. Now we just stared at the pile. She really is the greatest dog in the world, said Via. I know, said Justin, rubbing Via's back. <clears throat> she just started whimpering, like, all of a sudden, I said. Via nodded. Like two seconds after you left the table, she said. Mom was going to go after you, but Daisy started, like, whimpering. Like how, I said. Just whimpering. I don't know, said Via. <clears throat> like howling, I asked. Augie, like whimpering, she answered impatiently. She just started moaning, like something was really hurting her. And she was panting like crazy. Then she just kind of plopped down, and Mom went over and tried to pick her up, and whatever. She was obviously hurting. She bit Mom. What? I said. When Mom tried to touch her stomach, Daisy bit her hand, Via explained. <coughs> Daisy never bites anybody, I answered. She wasn't herself, said Justin. She was obviously in pain. Daddy was right, said Via. We shouldn't have let her get this bad. What do you mean, I said. He knew she was sick? Augie, Mom's taken her to the vet like three times in the last two months. She's been throwing up left and right. Haven't you noticed? But I didn't know she was sick. Via didn't say anything, but she put her arm around my shoulders and pulled me closer to her. I started to cry again. I'm sorry, Augie, she said softly. I'm really sorry about everything, okay? You forgive me? You know how much I love you, right? I nodded. Somehow that fight didn't matter much anymore. Was Mommy bleeding? I asked. It was just a nip, said Via. Right here. She pointed to the bottom of her thumb to show me exactly where Daisy had bitten Mom. Did it hurt her? Mommy's okay, Augie. She's fine. Mom and Dad came home two hours later. We knew the second they opened the door and Daisy wasn't with them that Daisy was gone. We all sat down in the living room around the pile of Daisy's toys. Dad told us what had happened at the animal hospital how the vet took Daisy for some x-rays and blood tests and came back and told them she had a huge mass in her stomach. She was having trouble breathing. Mom and Dad didn't want her to suffer. <clears throat> so Dad picked her up in his arms like he always liked to do, with her legs straight up in the air, and he and Mom kissed her goodbye over and over and over and whispered to her while the vet put a needle into her leg. And then, after about a minute, she died in Daddy's arms. It was so peaceful, Daddy said. She wasn't in any pain at all, like she was just going to sleep. A couple of times while he talked, Dad's voice got trembly, and he cleared his throat. I've never seen Dad cry before, but I saw him cry tonight. I had gone into Mom and Dad's bedroom looking for Mom to put me to bed, but saw Dad sitting on the edge of the bed, taking off his socks. <clears throat> his back was to the door, so he didn't know I was there. At first, I thought he was laughing, because his shoulders were shaking. But then he put his palms on his eyes, and I realized that he was crying. It was the cr quietest crying I'd ever heard, like a whisper. I was going to go over to him, 
but then I thought maybe he was whisper crying because he didn't want me or anyone else to hear him. So I walked out and went to Via's room, and I saw Mom laying next to Via on the bed, and Mom was whispering to Via, who was crying. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I went to my bed and put on my pajamas without anyone telling me to, and put the nightlight on and turned the light off and crawled into the little mountain of stuffed animals I had left on my bed earlier. It felt like all had happened that all had happened a million years ago. I took my hearing aids off and put them on the night table and put the covers up to my ears and imagined Daisy snuggling with me, her big wet tongue licking my face all over like it was her favorite face in the world. And that's how I fell asleep. <coughs> Heaven. I woke up later on and it was still dark. I got out of bed and walked into mom and dad's bedroom. Mommy, I whispered. It was completely dark, so I couldn't see her open her eyes. Mommy, you okay, honey? She said groggily. Can I sleep with you? Mom scooted over towards daddy's side of the bed, and I snuggled up next to her. She kissed my hair. Is your hand okay? I said. Via told me Daisy bit you. It was only a nip, she whispered in my ear. Mommy, I started crying. I'm sorry about what I said. Shh, there's nothing to be sorry about, she said. So quietly, I could barely hear her. She was rubbing the side of her face against my face. Is Via ashamed of me, I said. No, honey, no. You know she's not. She's just adjusting to a new school. It's not easy. I know. I know you know. I'm sorry I called you a liar. <clears throat> Go to sleep, sweet boy. I love you so much. I love you so much too, Mommy. Good night, honey, she said very softly. Mommy, is Daisy with Grands now? I think so. Are they in heaven? Yes. Do people look the same when they get to heaven? I don't know. I don't think so. Then how do people recognize each other? I don't know, sweetie. She sounded tired. <clears throat> they just feel it. You don't need your eyes to love, right? You just feel it inside you. That's how it is in heaven. It's just love, and no one forgets who they love. She kissed me again. Now go to sleep, honey. It's late, and I'm so tired. But I couldn't go to sleep, even after I knew she had fallen asleep. I could hear Daddy sleeping, too. And I imagined I could hear Via sleeping down the hallway in her room. And I wondered, I wondered if Daisy was sleeping in heaven right then. And if she was sleeping, was she dreaming about me? And I wondered how it would feel to be in heaven someday and not have my face matter anymore. Just like it never, ever mattered to Daisy. Understudy. <clears throat> Via brought home three tickets to her school play a few days after Daisy died. We never mentioned the fight we had over dinner again. On the night of the play, right before she and Justin were leaving to get to their school early, she gave me a big hug and told me she loved me and she was proud to be my sister. <clears throat> this was my first time in Via's new school. It was much bigger than her old school and a thousand times bigger than my school. More hallways, more room for people. The only really bad thing about my bionic lobot hearing aids was the fact that I couldn't wear a baseball cap anymore. In situations like these, baseball caps come in really handy. <clears throat> Sometimes I wish I could still get away with wearing that old astronaut helmet I used to wear when I was little. 
Believe it or not, people would think seeing a kid in an astronaut helmet was a lot less weird than seeing my face. Anyway, I kept my head down as I walked right behind Mom through the long, bright hallways. We followed the crowd to the auditorium where students handed out programs at the front entrance. We found seats in the fifth row, close to the middle. As soon as we sat down, Mom started looking inside her pocketbook. I can't believe I forgot my glasses, she said. <clears throat> Dad shook his head. Mom was always forgetting her glasses, or her keys, or something or other. She's flaky that way. You want me to move closer, said Dad. Mom squinted at the stage. No, I can see okay. Speak now, or forever hold your peace, said Dad. I'm fine, answered Mom. Look, there's Justin, I said to Dad, pointing out Justin's picture in the program. That's a nice picture of him, he said, nodding. How come there's no picture of Via, I said. She's an understudy, said Mom. But look, here's her name. Why do they call her an understudy, I asked. Wow, look at Miranda's picture, said Mom to Dad. I don't think I would have recognized her. Why do they call it an understudy, I repeated. Is that... It's what they call someone who replaces an actor if he can't perform for some reason, answered Mom. Did you hear Martin's getting remarried, Dad said to Mom. Are you kidding me, Mom answered, like she was surprised. Who's Martin, I asked. <clears throat> Miranda's father, Mom answered, and then to Dad. Who told you? <clears throat> I ran into Miranda's mother in the subway. She's not happy about it. He has a new baby on the way and everything. Wow, said Mom, shaking her head. What are you guys talking about, I said. Nothing, answered Dad. But why do they call it an understudy, I said. I don't know, Oggy Doggy, Dad answered. Maybe because the actors kind of study under the main actors or something. I really don't know. <clears throat> I was going to say something else. But then the lights went down. The audience got very quiet very quickly. Daddy, can you please not call me Oggy Doggy anymore? I whispered in Dad's ear. Dad smiled and nodded and gave me a thumbs up. The play started. The curtain opened. The stage was completely empty except for Justin, who was sitting on, on an old rickety chair tuning his fiddle. He was wearing an old-fashioned type of suit and a straw hat. This play is car called Our Town, he said to the audience. It was written by Thornton Wilder, produced and directed by Philip Davenport. The name of the town is Grover's Corners, New Hampshire, just across the Massachusetts line. Latitude, 42 degrees, 40 minutes. Longitude, 70 degrees, 37 minutes. The first act shows a day in our town. The day is May 7th, 1901. The time is just before dawn. I knew right then and there I was going to like the play. It wasn't like other school plays I'd been to, like The Wizard of Oz or Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. No, this was grown-up seeming, and I felt smart sitting there watching it. A little later in the play, a character named Mrs. Webb calls out for her daughter, Emily. I knew from the program that was the part Miranda was playing, so I leaned forward to get a better look at her. That's Miranda, Mom whispered to me, squinting at the stage when Emily walked out. She looks so different. It's not Miranda, I whispered. It's Via. Oh my God, said Mom, lurching forward in her seat. Shh, said Dad. It's Via, Mom whispered to him. I know, whispered Dad, smiling. Shh. The ending. The play was so amazing. I don't want to give away the ending, but it's kind of, it's the kind of ending that makes people in the audience teary. Mom totally lost it when Via, as Emily, said, Goodbye, goodbye, world. Goodbye, Grover's Corners, Mama and Papa, 
goodbye to clocks ticking and mama sunflowers, and food and coffee, and new iron dresses and hot baths, and sleeping and waking up. Oh, Earth, you're too wonderful for anybody to realize you. Via was actually crying while she was saying this, like real tears. I could see them rolling down her cheeks. It was totally awesome. After the curtain closed, everyone in the audience started clapping. Then the actors came out one by one. Via and Justin were the last ones out. And when they appeared, the whole audience rose to their feet. Bravo! I heard Dad yelling through his hands. Why is everyone getting up? I said. It's a standing ovation, said Mom, getting up. So I got up and clapped and clapped. I clapped until my hands hurt. For a second, I imagined how cool it would be to be Via and Justin right then. Having all these people standing up cheering for them. And I think there should be a rule that everyone in the world should get a standing, should get a standing ovation at least once in their lives. Finally, after I don't know how many minutes, the line of actors on stage stepped back and the curtains closed in front of them. The clapping audience stopped and the lights went up and the audience started getting up to leave. Me and Mom and Dad made our way to the, to the backstage. Crowds of people were congratulating their performers, surrounding them, patting them on the back. We saw Via and Justin at the center of the crowd, smiling at everyone, laughing and talking. Via shouted Dad, waving as he made his way through the crowd. When he got close enough, he hugged her and lifted her off the floor a little. You were amazing, sweetheart. Oh my God, Via. Mom was screaming with excitement. Oh my God, oh my God. She was hugging Via so hard, I thought Via would suffocate. But Via was laughing. You were brilliant, said Dad. Brilliant, Mom said, kind of nodding and shaking her head at the same time. And you, Justin, said Dad, shaking Justin's hand and giving him a hug at the same time. You were fantastic. Fantastic, Mom repeated. She was, honestly, so emotional she could barely talk. What a shock to see you up there, Via, said Dad. Mom didn't even recognize you at first, I said. I didn't recognize you, said Mom, her hand over her mouth. Miranda got sick right before the show started, said Via, all out of breath. There wasn't even time to make an announcement. I have to say, she looked kind of strange because she was wearing all this makeup and I'd never seen her like this before. And you stepped in there right at the last minute, said Dad. Wow. She was amazing, wasn't she, said Justin, his arm around Via. There wasn't a dry eye in the house, said Dad. Is Miranda okay, I said, but no one heard me. At that moment, a man who I think was their teacher came over to Justin and Via, clapping his hands. Bravo, bravo, Olivia and Justin. He kissed Via on both cheeks. I flubbed a couple of lines, said Via, shaking her head. But you got through it, said the man, smiling ear to ear. Mr. Davenport, these are my parents, said Via. You must be so proud of your girl, he said, shaking their hands with both of his hands. <clears throat> we are. And this is my little brother August, said Via. He looked like he was about to say something, but suddenly froze when he looked at me. <clears throat> Mr. D, said Justin, pulling him by the arm. Come meet my mom. Via was about to say something to me, but then someone else came over and started talking to her. And before I knew it, I was kind of alone in the crowd. I mean, I knew where mom and dad were, but there were so many people all around us, and the people kept bumping into me, spinning me around a bit, giving me that one-two look, which made me feel kind of bad. I don't know if it was because I was feeling hot or something, but I kind of started getting dizzy. People's faces were blurring in my head, and their voices were so loud it was almost hurting my ears. I tried to turn the volume down on my lobot ears, but I got confused and turned them louder at first, which kind of shocked me. And then I looked up and I didn't see Mom or Dad or Via anywhere. Via! I yelled out. I started pushing through the crowd to find Mom, 
Mommy! I really couldn't see anything but people's stomachs and ties all around me. Mommy! Suddenly, someone picked me up from behind. Look who's here, said a familiar voice, hugging me tight. I thought it was Via at first, but when I turned around, I was completely surprised. Hi, Major Tom, she said. Miranda, I answered, and I gave her the tightest hug I could give. That is the end of part six. A good place to stop for tonight. So, my friends, I have been thinking about it. I am going to make a conscious effort to do a better job with my closings um, and be a little less awkward. I don't know. I don't know if I can pull it off, but I'm going to try. So, let's see. I had mentioned my sister was in town. Uh, she... She had to go home this morning, but we were able to have breakfast together before she went, so that was nice. Uh, yesterday, we had a great day. We went to Wisconsin, um, where we are in Illinois. It's not that far to, to southern Wisconsin, so it was nice. We were able to go to a beautiful town called Lake Geneva and enjoy the sights there a bit and uh, spend too much money in the gift shops. <laughs> we had a nice lunch. Um with a great view of the lake. It was wonderful. From there, we went to um, Mars Cheese Castle. If any of you have ever been there, you know how amazing it is. If you haven't been there, if you ever get the opportunity to go, I highly recommend it. <laughs> I, I like cheese, um, especially if you like cheese. There's, It's a great gift shop and tons of like wide variety of cheeses that you don't normally see because, you know, Wisconsin is the cheese state. Then, to top off the day, we went to the Jelly Belly Warehouse in Pleasant Prairie, which has a little, um, a nice little tour and um, a fun gift shop with tons of different uh, Jelly Belly products and flavors and stuff. <coughs> Another thing I highly recommend if you get the chance to go. So, it's it's been a, it's, it was a great uh long weekend that we had and today was back to reality <laughs> so which is also nice so I hope it, all of you also had a great long weekend and uh, if you would like to share anything that you did go ahead and share it in the comments uh, when the next part of wander is ready it'll be right in that area <laughs> uh, click my picture to subscribe to the channel and until next time keep reading <laughs>